Oh, <laughs> I already started. Oh, I'm so excited to get started. This has been in the making for a while, but in order to officially begin, I have to get the book. Dear Journal, for the past six years, I have been writing in my game journal my thoughts on different video games and trying to discern what makes them engaging or unsatisfying. Now we will start a new chapter, an online video journal. Here I will record my ongoing thoughts on games that I experience. Since this is my first entry in this new form of a journal, I thought it would be good to provide some context on myself and the video games that I like to play and collect. When I was a small boy, I didn't have a game system at home, but my parents knew that I had a nagging interest in video games. I'm told that I would just stare at the attract mode of, a car of arcade systems while we were out, watching other people play, and spending too much time over at friends' homes playing video games or watching them play. Finally, I was gifted a Nintendo Entertainment System and a copy of Super Mario Bros. slash Duck Hunt, along with an orange zapper. While I never beat Super Mario Bros. as a kid, my first personal victory over a video game was Mega Man 4. I still remember that triumphant feeling that I had knowing that I had beaten that video game. I was hooked on that feeling, and soon after, I beat a different game called MC Kids. And while I sunk lots of hours into Super Mario Bros. 3, Wizards and Warriors, and other games, I would not beat them until much later in my life. A big treat for me as a kid was going to the game rental store and picking out a game to play. I rented other games like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, RC Pro-Am, and Adventures in the Magic Kingdom, just to name a few. My next system was the old gray Game Boy. I loved this thing, and I was constantly asking adults for batteries so that I could keep playing games. I would play through the Super Mario Land trilogy, Pokemon Red, Donkey Kong, and then after upgrading to a Game Boy Color, which used less batteries, I kept beating games like The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX. It took me a long time to upgrade to the Game Boy Advance, but when I did, I completed Mega Man Battle Network 3 and Sword of Mana. While I didn't own any 16-bit home consoles, I did play them at friends and family's homes. I played Jurassic Park on the Genesis at my cousin's house and Marvel Super Heroes War of the Gems on the Super Nintendo at a buddy's house. It was the same buddy's house where I was exposed to Secret of Mana, where I would play that with him and I would be the second player that would tag along. The next system my family owned was a PlayStation. This exposed me to some other games that I really enjoy to this day. My family started with the 32-bit versions of Frogger and Qbert, and then moved on to Crash Bandicoot 2. One of the games that I saved up my money for, in fact, I think it was the first game that I saved up my money for and then bought myself and it became my game, was Legend of Mana. I bought this game because it was a sequel to Secret of Mana, and I really enjoyed that game. I played this game constantly, even though my parents didn't have a memory card because they didn't know that we needed one. And so I would just play the first couple missions over and over again because it turns out leaving the PlayStation on to finish a game didn't work out as good as leaving an NES on to finish a game because PlayStation games were so much longer. Luckily, I was able to convince them to get a memory card and I was able to progress to the end of that game. Uh, we upgraded to a PlayStation 2 where I was introduced to Dynasty Warriors and other favorites. But I was missing the Nintendo games of my youth, so I got Ape Escape Pumped and Primed in place of Mario Party and Onimusha Blade Warriors in place of Super Smash Brothers. While these games didn't really measure up, I still played them with my friends and family throughout high school. Because I changed from Nintendo to Sony consoles, I purchased a PSP and really enjoyed it. My favorite game on that system is Valkyrie Profile Lenin. After I graduated high school with my new disposable income, I did go on and purchase a Nintendo DS and reconnected with some of the franchises of my childhood. At this point, I took a break from video games for a couple years. After that, I returned and picked up with the Nintendo Wii, where I finally got the real Mario Party and the real Super Smash Bros. games on that system. From here, I would purchase each new Nintendo console and usually purchase the Sony consoles one generation behind the current one. Currently hooked up to my HDTV, 
is a PS3, a Wii U, and a Nintendo Switch. But I have collected the consoles and handhelds from my younger days and I have them hooked up to an old tube TV that I revisit from time to time. My favorite game of all time is Tetris. I started playing this game on the NES and have played it on most every console since then. Most of the consoles that I own have some version of Tetris that can be played on them. My favorite game series is Mega Man Classic. While Mega Man is my favorite series, I have only played through the first six games that can be found on the NES. Out of these, I think the best game in that series is Mega Man 6, but I do understand why so many people like Mega Man 2 so much. I am a big Disney fan. I tried to keep up on the Kingdom Hearts series, but with all the different consoles that you needed to play that series on, I just couldn't keep up. I do have the collections that were released for the PlayStation 3, and I hope to catch up on that series someday. Uh, the Ace Attorney games is another series of games that can really get its hooks in me, and it can keep me up at night cross-examining witnesses when I should be, you know, sleeping. I was raised on single player and couch co-op play. I don't really care for online multiplayer games. I really like playing games like Smash Brothers with my own brothers, but we're all together sitting on a couch playing in the same room. Uh, when I do play team-based games like MOBAs or first-person shooters, I usually prefer if my team is all together in the same room and we can talk to each other. I really like playing first-person shooter games if you can get a LAN party set up or you have one team in this room with their TV and one team in the next room over with their TV and so not only can you coordinate with your team real well, but you can yell at the other team and get instant feedback from them, like when you shoot someone and take them down, which is always a big deal for me because I'm not very good at first person shooters. So when I kill you, I will probably tell you about it. While I've gotten used to DLC being in modern games, I am very against microtransactions. I do think there is a right way and a wrong way to implement them, but in general, I wish we didn't have them at all. I like trying to take a game and dissect it and figure out exactly what the engagement hook is for a game. And then I like to go back and re-examine that same game and see how all of the different systems and mechanics fit together in order to support and lift that engagement hook. Or in some cases, they detract from the engagement hook. And I find those are the games that are not as engaging and kind of are a letdown. I have my own personal collection of games that I enjoy games that I can share with my friends and family. Games have been a big part of my life and they have been a great force for good. So I hope that my collection and this journal can be a force for good in others' lives as well. Candidly yours, 8BitDad7DC, better known as Seth.